someone, as I was saying, is playing Glastonbury not once, not twice. Katie Beza, you are greedy when it comes to Glastonbury <laughs> slots. Where are you on and how have you mangled this twice? So, I have a song called Why Can't I Have Two? So I might as well have two slots at Glastonbury, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, but I have, I'm doing the Lonely Hearts Club at 3.30 on Saturday and then I'm doing 9.20 or 9.15 or at the Avalon tent on Sunday. And to explain about you, you were nominated for the Rising Star Award at this year's Brit Awards. Mm. You've just had a top 10 album as yeah. well with Still Learning, although we have to call it a mixtape. It's a mixtape for, for, for the vibes, it's a mixtape. It was amazing. Number seven I was, how crazy is that? The whole journey's been amazing and I'm so happy that I'm here. I said to you before, luckiest girl in the world, I'm having the best time ever, so. And Glastonbury, <laughs> you came last year, you did it properly. You, you weren't in the Showbiz <laughs> Hotel, you were in a tent. Where were you? I was all the way. Yeah. I don't know. It took me like an hour to walk yeah. anywhere. It was There's crazy. a lot of walking in Glastonbury. A lot of walking. You get your steps in, that's for sure. But all the way up there, it was lovely. I love being in the midst of it all and having fun. But this year, because I'm performing, I thought, let's yeah. get somewhere yeah. nice to stay. Because if it rains, all my lovely clothes for the stage, they have to be nice. So we have a house. So what was it like for you as a punter at Glastonbury? <laughs> the best thing on earth ever. I've spoken about it every single day since it ended. Every single day. Now I'm performing. It's insane crazy. Were you there for Elton? Yes, I cried the whole way through it. Really? <laughs> Why? Why? I love Elton John. I think he's amazing. He's one of Freddie Mercury and Elton John are like my biggest inspirations ever. I love them. Um, and it was Benny and the Jets. As soon as it came in, oh, floods of tears. It was just amazing. And the vibe as well, like the crowd, it's just incredible. You were saying how much walking you have to do at Glastonbury. Uh -huh. You've already got an injury. I do. I have blisters. Mm. I know. But pretty hurts. But you hurts. You have to wear the boots. The boots are made for walking, they how say. How is this going to affect your uh, dance routines? Never. Then? Yeah. Nothing's going to break my stride or slow me down. I'm here. I'm ready. No. Let, let's go. <laughs> Another thing that people get at Glastonbury are the nasty clashes. Sunday night, you have a heck of a one because you're on the Avalon stage, which is a great place to play, at the same time as SZA, one of your all-time heroes. She is like, she's been my number one listen to artist since I was like 12 years old. And I've been dying to see her and now I'm one of the, which is kind of cool, you know, we're clashing at Glastonbury. Pfft, what? Crazy, but I'm annoyed. Well, it's a good job because you're fans, because you're on twice. They can come and see you when Scissor's not on. Exactly! On Saturday at 3.30. Why? And, and very briefly to end, I want to reveal to listeners, we have both had malfunctions right before you came on air. You spilt coffee down your top. Down my top. Had to do it quick. Yesterday, 6 o'clock news, spilt my lunch down my white T-shirt, was miles away. Had to do the 6 o'clock news, just turned my T-shirt around. That's the kind of thing that goes on at We're Glastonbury, at Glastonbury. Bray, isn't it? Yeah, just Listen, get on with it. Thank you very much. Thank and you. to end, we have the Shalalas to 